Thank you very much indeed for joining us here today. And those were some of the highlights of an extraordinary 2018. We're going to be joined by a lot of our main fighters coming up for 2019 up here on the stage shortly, of course, including Tyson Fury. But Frank, when you look back, Frank Warren alongside me, when you look back at some of those highlights, 2018 really was something very special. It was. We had a fight of the year, round of the year. Um, we've gone strength to strength with BT. It's been a fantastic, which has been a fantastic journey. And this year is going to be even bigger and better. When you look at some of those contests, and notably, I suppose, Tyson's fights, Josh's fights, but others as well, it seemed that BT and BT box office were really setting the agenda in terms of competitive fights. Competitive and quality fights, and fights that should be pay-per-view. And that's, what, that's the benchmark, and uh, as I say, it's onwards and upwards. All the guys are here today. They've got a great platform to work, to be seen on, you know, uh, not just on B BT, but also on ESPN, so they're getting great um, exposure in the States. This is a fantastic time to be in boxing for boxers. This is, a, this is a, an era now where these guys can go and really make big name for themselves, both sides of the pond, and, and obviously it can be very lucrative for them. We've uh, both been around a year or two, but 2019 in boxing terms, British boxing terms, but particularly <coughs> in terms of uh, BT and BT box office, it's, it's, it's exciting. Very, very exciting. I'm excited. You know, I promote, obviously, I manage fighters, but most of all, I'm a boxing fan. It don't get any better than this. Now, you alluded there to the uh, ESPN situation, and uh, that is really the big news, or one of the big news items of today. Can you just clarify exactly what that ESPN deal is all about? <clears throat> yeah, Tyson uh, Fury and Queensbury have signed a um, long-term deal with ESPN. He's, he will be, they will be... Tyson's exclusive broadcasters in the States. They have a platform of just nearly 3 million uh, subscribers on ESPN Plus and ESPN. Um, this is going to be something special for Tyson. It gives him a chance to become the guy that you want to fight now. We've not got to go like, we, like he had to go to Germany to fight Klitschko, like he had to go to fight Wilder on Showtime. That no longer happens. We have the biggest platform for him to be on. And that means he is in a tremendous position as far as a boxer is concerned. And it's a, it's a fabulous deal for him. It puts you in a, a stronger position and in a, a position of long-term strength. Well, it does. I mean, but, you know, ESPN and BT combined with what we're doing with both these, you know, with both the broadcasters, we're in a, you know, these guys are in a great position and Tyson's in a fantastic position. He will get what he will get all what he wants, which is to be the guy, you know, he's the lineal champion. He's the blue corner. He's not the red corner. That's what he's going to be. He's the blue corner now. And before we, we welcome the big fella up onto stage, actually in world terms now, how do you see Tyson Fury's position in stance? How important a player now in the world heavyweight division is he? Is he, in your eyes, number one? I think in most people he's number one. You look at the social media, most people think he's the number one heavyweight out there. Um, <laughs> he's, the, he's the heavyweight that steps up to the plate. He's done it. He goes to the other guy's backyard. He can't do no more than he does. And he's getting the respect from the public, for it, certainly from the British public. And also, it must be said, from the Americans now. Because ESPN have gone and put themselves, you know, on the block here. They've said, we want this guy. This is the guy we want to get behind. So, as I say, two great, great broadcasters, BT... Pushing, the, pushing out the uh, boat here and also in the States, he's in a fantastic position where he should be because he is the number one lineal champion. He's the lineal champion. And it's not a belt, as some promoter said. Lineal, there's not a lineal belt. It's the guy that, from history, he's the guy that beat the guy that beat the guy that beat the guy. That's what he is. He's the number one. Well, let's waste no more time in welcoming him up to the stage. Tyson Fury, lineal champion of the world. He's going to join myself and Frank here and we'll discuss exactly what this agreement and what the immediate future is going to bring for him. And here he comes. Is this mic working? No. <laughs> We've got you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Gypsy King's back on stage. John, how are we? Tyson, good to see you. Frank, cheers, how mate. How are you doing, man? <sighs> oh. Right, Bill, <laughs> Nathan, the boys. Well, Tyson, first off, you're clearly in great shape. 
I can't remember being better. Are these mics even working? It's working. It's working. Can everybody hear me? Or can they, is it just my voice that can hear? No, can, we can... Yeah, feel good there, uh, John. Feel good. Trained right through the Christmas and New Year and ever since. I've got like a, a habit of training every day and keeps me well, keeps me fit and in shape and get paid to do it, so it's not a bad old job, really. So just explain then from your perspective <coughs> what this ESPN deal means for you. My grip of it, which is not a very clever one, but my gist of it all is ESPN are the biggest uh, sporting network in the world, combined with BT Sports. So I'll have dual viewers from America and the UK. Um, and it gives me an opportunity to fight on the biggest broadcasting network in the world and be shown to the most people and to be able to be in a position to make the biggest and best fights possible and not be an opponent. They have to come to the Tyson Fury show now because I've got my own platform in America and the UK. So it puts me right on top where I should be. And now they're going to have to come free me. Well, let's move on to the big question, I guess, that everybody watching this and following boxing is going to want to know. We've talked a lot about Deontay Wilder. We all remember that extraordinary fight on December the 2nd when you produced <coughs> the most amazing performance. But Frank, what about the rematch? Well, Tyson wants it. We all want it and we've got to make it happen. It's a different situation now. Showtime's not the only game in town. Uh, it's changed dramatically. So it's up to us now to sit down and try and get it over the line. And from your perspective, I mean, how much do you want the guy in the ring again? Listen... If I didn't want to fight him, I wouldn't have uh, took it in the first place. As far as I'm concerned, the fight is more makeable now than ever because we have the biggest boys in the game behind us. Um, and I'm only a fighter. I can only fight who they put in front of me. I want the biggest fights, the Joshua's, the Wilders of the world, and everybody else out there too. He'll be watching. He'll be watching this. You can be sure of that. Well, if you're watching, Deontay, I'm coming for you, baby! <laughs> for again. And this time you can't rip me off. Well, it's, how, how soon, Frank, in realistic terms, can we, can we see that happening? I mean, we're talking of talking <coughs> Tyson being back in the ring, maybe in the next two or three months. We want him out as soon as possible. Uh, obviously, the talks will continue, but he's not going to sit around waiting. We will get him out. Tyson needs to fight. It's what he's training all the time for. He wants to be active, and he's got, he wants to become a big star. You know, this ESPN situation for him is probably one of the... It's one of the biggest things to happen to a British sportsman. The platform he's now got is, is huge. Three million, as I said earlier, three million subscribers. That's bigger than anyone gets seen, uh, any, any fighters get seen in the States. You know, certainly a British fighter, and it's, uh, it's something special. So the name of the game, get out there, be busy, let the American public as well as the British public see him, and keep and get these belts. That's what it's all about, this deal. So... His next fight, are we talking about it being in America or being over here? Well, we will see what happens. That's what we're working on at the moment. It, it, it probably looks like being in America, but anything can happen, as we all know, because this time 10 days ago, or a week ago, we, we, we weren't even talking about ESPN. So lots of things happen in boxing. But this is a good thing for Tyson, and it's now up to us to go out there and make sure the, the fights that he craves and wants, we deliver. Tyson, how much did that Wilder fight actually mean to you when you look back at it? So I trained hard for the fight. It was what I wanted. I asked Frank to get me the Wilder fight after two combat fights. Everybody in my team said it's a bad idea. But me and um, I spoke to Billy Joe and he said it's a, a dare to be great move. He said I because. Was a good move for you. Yeah. Um, it was a dare to be great move because who'd have thought after only two fights, low level opposition, one was a comeback blow away and one was a, to get a few rounds in, that I could have come back on that level and did what I did. Not many people. And I dared to be great and I come out the other side smelling the roses. And, um. Did you chuck me my 10% twice and Yeah, 100%. Um, and what did it mean to me? Now, well, it doesn't mean really nothing to me at the minute because it's in the past and we, we can't change what's happened and all that. And it is what it is. I look forward to the future. Tell us from your perspective, though, what, what, what the public reaction has been like. Because, I mean, from my, from my point, sort of sitting one step removed, if you like, you seem to have become this amazing folk hero and people oh. are with you now. Um, I got a lot of support. The support I've had over the, uh, the last few months has been great. Thank you to everybody who supported me. It's been a fantastic journey, to say the least. Like, 
Two years ago, I was down and out. I was, however, wait, we've all heard the story a million times. 28 stone, I got addicted to drugs and alcohol, depressed, anxiety, all these things, Frank. Mm -hmm. And then to come back to look at me today, looking like an Adonis. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a Cinderella story, isn't it? Cinderella. It's man. what dreams are made out of. And I'm living this dream. And I'm here today to tell a massive story. And, and I'm on tour at the minute, and I'm, I'm promoting mental health at the minute, massively. And more than boxing, Frank, I know you don't want to hear this. I do. But more than boxing, it means more to me than any boxing match, and any contest, or any belt I can ever win. I've already won every belt there is to win in boxing anyway. I beat all the do-gooders and all the so-called top men. To me, it's about spreading the word on mental health and helping people around the world. The millions and millions of people who suffer in silence with problems and can't come out. If I can come out seven foot nearly and 20 stone and a big heavyweight champion of the world, then anybody can get help. So it's an amazing story and it needs to be told more. How proud are you to have got where you are now from where you were? Because, I mean, anybody can see looking at you now, you look like an athlete. Well, I've never looked like an athlete, John, and I don't suppose if I oh, took my shirt on. off now, I'd look like one. <laughs> and just a fat, bald-headed fella who does what he does, and he's good at something, naturally gifted, I suppose. Um, I'm very proud of what I've achieved, because when I started boxing as a young boy, the odds of becoming a world champion is astronomical. Um, I've, had, I've won every belt along the way, like I've just said. Um, it's been an amazing journey. I've had me ups and downs, but, you know... Along with the sunshine, there has to be a little rain sometimes. Damn, that was a great As song. As the song went. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I have had a lot of sunshine, but I've had a lot of rain too, and I suppose it, it, it builds character. It does. It really does, you know. I'm sat here today, a man who's had glory, fame, and lots of pain too. So I'm an experienced campaigner in the division. Not only can I talk about boxing and know what I'm talking about, I can talk about all the other things, because I'm experienced and I've been there and wore the T-shirt. So it's, it's great. It's a new chapter for me. This, I'm in my second career anyway. I've had, this is my third career now with ESPN as well. So I've had a million careers, a million lives, and I'm just so thankful for everyone who keeps giving me the opportunities. And all I've got to do is just keep winning and keep doing what I do best, training and keeping out of trouble and straight on the straight and narrow. And I think I'll be all right. Well, let's talk about the, the, the two big names, about Deontay <coughs> and, of course, about AJ, about <coughs> Anthony Joshua, who's got his own fight coming up in June, but Deontay, first of all, having had that fight in December, December the 2nd in Los Angeles, how much now do you actually burn for the chance to get in there and complete, really, what you started but didn't actually finish? To be honest, I'm happy with whatever, whatever happens in my life, whatever cards I'm dealt, I'm happy with. Whatever's happened before, I'm happy, I'm happy with everything because I'm healthy and well sat here. You know, um, on the same night, Donna Stevenson got a bit of brain damage or yep. whatever, and I hope he gets well soon and all that. But we're in a very dangerous sport. And not only more than winning, and like I said, more than any fights, to go home healthy to my family is a massive thing. I've got five kids and a wife, and if I got brain damage, it'd be the end of everything. There would be no continuing. So it's a very dangerous world we're living in. I'm just very thankful to be sat here healthy and well minded and fit as a fiddle and healthy as a trout. You know, Deontay Wilder. <laughs> Great guy, top fella, good fighting man, but to me, still a big useless dosser. Um, <laughs> and they had, to, they had to rob me in America to get a decision. Well, they never got a decision, they got a draw. They've basically messed me record up by giving me a big old blue tick on me, um, on me record. Um, it is what it is, I can't, I can't complain. I'm healthy and well, and I'm out of trouble, which is the most important thing you can be in life. Frank, where does Anthony Joshua sit in all of this? Because... Uh, <laughs> Everybody who follows boxing, as well as wanting Deontay Wilder against Tyson, are wanting Anthony Joshua against Tyson. We did try to make the fight, and it's very simple. It was a 50-50 fight, but they didn't want it. They wanted to keep, keep all the money. And to be quite honest, I don't think they even wanted the fight, because no one approached us to make the fight at all. So he's, he's now going to the States. He's fighting uh, his name, big, big Baby Miller. 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 He's fighting him out there. And that'll be his debut in America on, uh, on the zone. So they'll get on with their business. Do we want to make the fight? Would we like to see the fight? Of course we'd like to see the fight. But you know what? We're on a bigger platform with more subscribers. You know, ESPN in the States is a, is a massive, massive channel. It's the biggest sports channel out there. It's got, as I just said, it's got the most subscribers. So Tyson's got the, the shop window. And 
I think they're going to have to come to us to make this fight now. The game, the game has changed dramatically as far as that's concerned. What a difference a year makes. What a fight. difference. What a difference a few months makes. It's, Different few weeks it. can yeah. make. Yeah, and, it's, and I've got to be honest, and it's only happening for one reason and one reason only, because of Tyson, from where he's come from to where he's got himself to. I mean, you know, this didn't happen because of me or anyone else. It's because of himself. He, he committed himself to getting back into the ring. He committed himself to getting himself well being a, a dad again and a husband and so forth again and he's gone out and done it and that, that is an achievement in itself the rest of it will just fall into place now December the 2nd he completely changed the landscape didn't he? I th uh, well he did, was that, there was no doubt about that but for me I, I've always you know I, I felt when he fought Derek Chisora the second time I really thought Derek Chisora was going to beat him and he took Derek Come to on score. Frank, show some respect No I, I am I, 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 he, was coming off, he was coming off a good run of fights and he's struck me. Look what he's done with, with Dylan White. He only lost, but he got stops and there was nothing. He was winning the fight. But the fact of the matter is, you took him to score, and that for me, you know, I've become a massive convert that night. And I said that night to you, you'll beat Klitschko, which you went out and did in the other guy's, guy's backyard. But you make things happen, and you've made this happen, and it's all credit to you. Tyson, if you could look at the, your remaining years, however many they may be in boxing. How much do you actually want to be able to get away from it one day and say, yeah, I fought everybody and I beat everybody, in which case you would have to fight Anthony Joshua? Listen, boxing is boxing. I suppose you can only fight who's available. Um, and, and most of the time, all these big fights happen. Sometimes they never happen. And am I going to cry about it when I'm, I'm an old, old man, a multimillionaire, sat down in my chair, with every belt in boxing, and, you know, such a bad life. Am I going to cry about a fight that never happened? No, not interested. Whatever fights happen, Frank's yeah. the promoter, Frank. Do you know, I was just on the phone with Max Kellerman, yeah? And he said something to me that was very, very, very true. He said, there's expectations, and then there's deliverance. Correct. So I can expect all these big fights to happen. Now we're with Frank and ESPN and Top Rank, just so many big names combined. You look over there, all the, all the names are there, and them, them three people are going to control boxing, as far as I'm concerned. So my expectation is colossal. But the deliverance, I'll tell you this time next year. And if we're all shite, I'll let you all know. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic journey. Um, like we say, it's all about deliverance, isn't it, Frank? It is. Frank don't. said, I'm going to have three fights this year. Hopefully I will. I had three fights last year in six months. So we've got 12 months now, Frank. Oh, well, no. <coughs> 10 now, because we're at the end of February, to do three fights. And I'll be looking forward to keeping busy. Very busy. That's the name of the game. That's what we're here for. And that's it. Well, last word on, from you then, Frank, <coughs> about Tyson and what's coming up. When can we expect to see him back in the um, ring? Um, I spoke to Bob Arum. Uh, last night, we're trying to sort the date out. I'd like to get it. Well, he wants to fight latest in May. I want to fight next week. I know you do. You look like you could fight next I'm week. Ready. We're I'm gonna, ready. To fight. We're going to work on that and hopefully <coughs> within the next week we'll have the date nailed down. But, it, it, but there's a lot of negotiations got to go on. It's not just about when it's and also getting certain fights made. So there's a lot to do, a lot of work to do. Because no one knew about this until today. This was a secret within the industry. I'm sure it's a big, big, big shock for Deontay Wilder this morning and his team that this has happened. So we've got a lot of telephone calls and meetings before we can uh, move forward. Tyson, we all wish you all the best. I hope 2019 is going to be a big success for you. Listen, the most important thing for me would be in 2019 to be sat here and the end of 2019 and telling you all the same thing. If I'm healthy and well and out of trouble, I've had a very successful year. So I'll see you all at the end of 19 and we'll see where we got to. All the best. Thank you very much. Well